Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, August 31st, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, starting off with Hurricane Madeline here, this is the most current threat here to the big island of Hawaii. Uh, the good news, though, is the system does seem to have weakened a great deal over the last 24 hours. Yesterday, we saw a defined eye in a central dense overcast region, but the shear has really taken a toll, and today we actually saw the low-level center become exposed from out from underneath the thunderstorms for a little bit. And this may not even be a hurricane anymore, but the hurricane hunters are out there assessing that right now, and the current advisory still has this with 75 mile per hour winds, which are hurricane force. But regardless of whether it technically meets the hurricane threshold, uh, it doesn't really matter at this point as the heaviest impacts are going to be from the torrential rains that can fall over this high terrain over the Big Island. And this is going to be the primary concern for uh, flooding, flash flooding, mudslides, uh, that kind of thing is usually the problem with tropical systems that affect the Big Island. And uh, this will be no different here. In addition, very heavy swells, which uh, could have been generated back when the hurricane was much stronger back here, will be still uh, very much a problem on the coast here. Even though the system has weakened, the ocean has greater inertia than that. So the waves and swells generated when it was stronger out here are still going to be coming in toward the coast and won't lose that much intensity, even though the storm is now technically weaker. Uh, so be in, keep an eye out for that. We can see that the track is uh, dipping down just to the south of the island as forecast from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center, uh, but this is perhaps even worse than a track north as again the onshore flow promotes the heaviest rainfall here on the island. Uh, so uh, definitely dangerous conditions will still be possible from the system. The hurricane warning has been discontinued based on the weakening, but a tropical storm warning does remain in effect, in fact all the way up to the island of Maui as well. And uh, so again, passing to the south tonight and uh, during the day tomorrow we'll begin moving away uh, but adverse conditions will continue affecting the islands overnight tonight. Moving on to the Atlantic, we have uh, Tropical Storm Hermine now upgraded to Tropical Depression 9 earlier today as recon flights went in and found Tropical Storm Force winds on the southeast side of the system. The northwest side remains comparatively weak uh, with little convection today, but we do see a marked increase in organization over yesterday and the day before that. Uh, locating the low-level low center has been difficult today. Earlier it was uh, kind of out here, even out from underneath this deep convective burst, but over the last uh, few hours it has kind of dipped east-southeastward and seems to be trying to reform much closer to this convective burst, and the recon plane in there has been hunting this thing down, and the original center early in the flight was here, now it's all the way over here to the east and it's really been dancing around over the last uh, few hours, indicating that it is uh, fragile and reforming potentially closer to the deep convection. This is kind of the thing we've been watching for because again the, mi the mid-level center has been farther off to the east where this deep convection is and they're getting pretty close to stacking now. If the low-level center forms directly underneath of this, uh, they will be pretty close to a vertically aligned system and this is the key that we've been watching for for days now uh, that we've been talking about. As soon as it vertically aligns, intensification becomes much easier for the system. Now another question is whether this little jump to the east will affect the long-term track, which is was based on a position a little bit farther west here. Most of the models think it's over here right now. If it actually jumps over here, the question is whether it affects the eventual landfall point up in Florida and the answer to that question is not all too clear uh, because the uh, center of circulation is not as well defined as it could be and to illustrate that if you take a look at right where I'm circling I'm gonna take this marker away but if you look really close now you'll see that the clouds are moving from southeast to northwest in this direction right here but if the low level center is down here according to recon this wind direction doesn't make a lot of sense it should be out of the northwest since it's out of the southeast here, what this tells you is that the low-level center is actually shaped like an oval, like this. It is not circular right in here. It is instead elongated to the northwest. And what this tells you is that it's been rotating because last night it was oriented more like this. It is now rotated around like this. And then by tonight and tomorrow, it may rotate all the way around to like this and then back to its original orientation. And so when these things are elliptical like that, they tend to orbit themselves or they, they rotate in and of themselves. And so the actual centroid of this circulation may not have actually jogged as much to the east as it currently looks. But what it's doing right now is this lobe is extending. There's one lobe here, one lobe here, and this lobe is the one that's trying to stack with the mid-level center under the convection. It may become the dominant one, but that also means that it may rotate back up 
toward the north a little bit during the day tomorrow and regain some of that westward progress uh, so it may jog to the east and then come back. So the exact effect that this is having on the track right now, not so clear. Uh, but as we'll talk about more later, the exact landfall point of this will not matter so much for the overall impacts to Florida. But that's currently what we're watching as far as the uh, track goes. And again, this elliptic orientation does mean that there's still some disorganization to the system. And the recon plane kind of confirms here. Look at how light the winds are. On the northwest side, this is clearly half a storm at the moment. All of the tropical storm force winds are southeast of center. It will take time to fill this western side in, and that is difficult for these systems to do. But given enough time, uh, it can happen. And right now, the system will have about 30, 36 hours more over water before it makes it to the Florida coastline. So this does have time to strengthen. And what we're seeing today is trends uh, that are uh, hinting at greater organization. We have banding features here. And we have a central dense overcast trying to form and sustain itself. We also have very healthy outflow on the western side. And this is illustrating to you that the uh, shear is not uh, so terrible for the system. There is about some 15 knot southwesterly shear over the system right now. But with the outflow expanding out like this on the western side, illustrates that it's not enough to decapitate the system. And thus, uh, we are seeing it able to reform near the deep convection. And eventually, this northern side and northwestern quadrant may fill in with some additional convection. And this will not uh, struggle quite as much with the shear as it was before. In addition, when we look at the water vapor imagery, we can see farther north here, in addition to this outflow that you can see very well, note the acceleration that's occurring right now over North Florida and Southeast Georgia. This is the development of a, a nice little jet streak that will eventually become an outflow channel that Hermine can use. Uh, this upper level low that's been drifting around Georgia and South Carolina is really accelerating the flow here from southwest to northeast. And this is the kind of thing that this will be able to take advantage of as it nears because again when the air is able to very easily accelerate out through one of these channels, these uh, outflow channels, it reduces the work necessary for the air to ascend in the center of the storm and then push outward. The air is always trying to push out in these outflow channels but a little jet streak like this makes that process easier and when that process is easier more of the storm's energy can go into accelerating the wind uh, and strengthening the storm overall so uh, we're going to have to keep an eye on this as we've been talking about as this jet streak forms will allow the system to fight shear and dry air as it moves toward the northeast and uh, today we have much higher confidence uh, that this is going to intensify as it nears the coast and the current National Hurricane Center forecast still has a hurricane watch all the way from Tampa all the way west to about Destin, Florida over here and uh, this is a large area that could potentially experience a uh, tropical storm or even hurricane conditions depending on exactly where the center makes landfall but again especially near and southeast of center will have the strongest winds perhaps more toward the north side as well uh, the west side perhaps a little bit weaker winds uh, but we are talking about a large area of heavy rains and the potential for storm surge flooding and uh, this is still going to be mostly a water concern the winds uh, will take out power in places but the primary problem for florida with systems like this is usually the water both inland flooding and coastal flooding from surge this is the rainfall forecast from wpc right now showing rainfall totals in excess of eight to nine inches over the next three days and you see even far up the eastern seaboard here is going to be a problem as this track will bring it just inland here bringing heavy rainfall totals over a large swath of the southeast United States and then potentially even affecting New England in the longer range and models kind of have it milling around in here under a blocking pattern and this could cause uh, very nasty conditions over the Labor Day weekend and into next week up into the northeast. So this will be with us and affecting many states uh, up this corridor of the country and this will be something we have to watch very carefully. Here's the storm surge map again. Uh, everything in blue above one foot, yellow three feet, and some orange even up to six feet potential uh, storm surge inundation according to this graphic in areas near and southeast of where the storm makes landfall. This is not an exact map and it could change based on exact characteristics of the storm, where exactly the landfall location is, and exactly how the winds are getting fu are funneling water into this area. This is an estimation of the kind of inundation you can expect. You can see a large area of the coastline seeing several feet of water potentially inundating the coastline. So this will be the primary concern as this moves up. Very strong wind on the southeast side and inland flooding and the potential for tropical storm 
to even hurricane force winds are possible as this comes ashore in the Florida Panhandle. So we'll keep an eye on this very closely. Stay tuned to the National Weather Services in Tallahassee and Tampa and Jacksonville for the latest information. And the National Hurricane Center will, of course, keep issuing advisories as the system approaches the shore. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.